For the most part, the curing process for silicone is hands-off. We won't be needing to interact with our molds too much. This part of the process is all about letting the material do its thing. However, what we mean by do its thing is different depending on the type of silicone we use. Let's look at our two types of silicone, the specific cure process for each, and what factors affect that type of cure. We'll avoid the complex chemistry here and focus only on what we need to know to use these materials effectively. During the planning phase of our process, we chose a type of silicone to use. Our choice was either a tin cure silicone or a platinum cure silicone. We discussed the differences between the two and the benefits of using one over the other. However, we did not discuss the way that each type of silicone cures. Tin cure silicones are condensation cured. When the catalyst, usually the B side, is added to the rubber base, usually the A side, a chemical reaction occurs. That chemical reaction utilizes the ambient moisture in the air, some amount of the metal tin, and specific chemical crosslinkers as a part of its curing process. Platinum cure silicones are addition cured. Addition cured silicones depend on a chemical reaction to combine components in each side of the material into larger molecules, essentially adding them together. Platinum cure silicones utilize the metal platinum as a part of this reaction, giving the group their name. Knowing how the different types of silicones cure will help us determine what factors in our space will affect our cure times and mold properties. Since tin cure silicones rely on ambient moisture or condensation, we'll want to make sure that we let them cure in an environment that isn't too dry. Normal room temperature and typical humidity will work just fine. Adding heat to our tin cure silicones won't have a useful effect and isn't really worth our time. Platinum cure silicones do not rely on any moisture to cure and can be treated with heat at certain times in the process to alter the attributes or extend the life of our molds. Up to this point, we've been able to think something through and then immediately take action. When it comes to curing silicone, we have to be a little more patient. Each silicone is formulated to cure over a specific amount of time at a certain rate. Let's look at where we can locate that time and what stages we'll see along the way. When choosing a silicone, we reviewed some of the main technical specifications and attributes of our material. One of those attributes is the cure time. This can also be referred to as the demold time. The cure time is the set amount of time required for the silicone to go through enough of its chemical changes in order to be handled safely and function as advertised. It's common for silicone rubbers to have cure times ranging from 3 to 24 hours, depending on the specific material we're using. You can often find this information on the manufacturer's website, in the technical specifications, or on the packaging of the material itself. During the cure time, our new silicone will go through a few stages. The first stage occurs just after the open time has expired and is called the gel state. This term is commonly used in resin casting as well, since the material goes from a more flowing liquid state to a more gelled and still state. At this point in our curing process, the material is still susceptible to spills and other tampering. After the gel state, our silicone will continue to cure towards a tacky state. At this point, the silicone rubber will not move position, but will still be tacky if touched. It hasn't reached its full hardness, and it needs more time to cure. After the tacky stage will be our tack-free stage. Here our material is locked in position, and the majority of the chemical reaction is done. However, that does not mean our silicone is at its rated hardness yet, or done curing we will need to wait until our cure time has elapsed. Once we have reached the end of our cure time, we can see that the material is tack-free and at its rated hardness. The mold is complete and ready for the next phase. While our silicone is curing, we can check in on it. The best way to do this is by using what's called a witness cup. A witness cup is a small amount of silicone left over from our mixture set aside in a specific cup. Since our material in our witness cup is from the same batch our mold is, we can tell what stage of curing our mold is in simply by checking our witness cup. Checking our witness cup allows us to check in on our material without disturbing our mold. We can check our witness cup at a specific interval or time to ensure our silicone is curing as expected. Or we can wait until the end of our cure time has elapsed and check our witness cup before touching our mold. The only factor to keep in mind is that the amount of material in our witness cup 
is different from our mold. Different amounts of the same material can cure at different rates. This is common in resin casting and also needs to be considered here. When we test our silicone in our witness cup, we want to use a stir stick or another tool. Since the silicone is going through a chemical reaction, we do not want to touch it with our bare hands or another section of exposed skin. To test our material, we'll simply grab our small stir stick or toothpick and gently tap the top surface. Depending on the curing stage our silicone is in, our stick may pull on the material or simply bounce back. Once our cure time has passed and the test of our witness cup comes back clean, we can begin the demolding process. After our silicone has gone through its curing process, we can expect it to perform as advertised by our manufacturer. However, sometimes we may want our mold to perform a little better than expected, especially if our casting application and material will be extra hard on our mold. To account for this, we can post-cure some of our silicone rubber molds. Let's talk about what post-curing is, why we do it, when we use this technique, and some basic steps to do so effectively. Post-curing is the process of steadily heating our already cured mold immediately after finishing the mold to increase its physical properties. This technique is also used for other materials like polyurethane rubber and other casting mediums. We use post-curing for silicone in order to activate the maximum physical properties of that particular material. This can allow us to use slightly higher temperature casting materials, extend the life of our mold, and even make demolding parts a little easier. Although it might be tempting to post-cure every mold that we make, doing so may not be necessary, unless we plan to use specifically aggressive casting materials or if we need our molds to last beyond the expected amount of castings, it is most likely unneeded. Post-curing properly will not hurt our molds, but its benefits might not be worth our time. To post-cure our silicone, we'll let our mold complete its cure time, demold our master, and then place it under approximately 150 degrees Fahrenheit for anywhere from three to eight hours, depending on the material. The most common tools used to do this is a dedicated full-size or toaster oven. Do not use your kitchen oven or any other oven that will be used to cook food. It is important that we post-cure our silicone molds in a dedicated oven for this operation. Once our time has elapsed, we can remove the mold from the oven and allow it to come back to room temperature before we begin casting. When we are working with silicone and other mold making and casting materials, we will need to be aware of and pay attention to the environmental factors of the space we're working in. Different elements such as the temperature and humidity may affect the speed at which our material cures. Let's look at how silicones are affected by these factors and how to know what we can expect when working with them. Platinum cure silicones are addition cured and do not depend on many outside forces in order to cure properly. The relative humidity of an environment will not necessarily have an effect on this material. However, if our work area is well above normal temperatures, we may see the cure time decrease, meaning our mold will be cured faster. The opposite is true for tin cure silicones. Since tin cure silicones are condensation cured, the ambient moisture in the air will have an effect on the cure time of our material. The temperature, however, does not have as big of an impact. Knowing the temperature of our space and the humidity will help us determine if our silicone will be impacted. Installing a simple digital thermometer in our space will give us this information. It's best practice to write down the temperature and humidity in our space next to our witness cup so that we can see how this is affecting our silicone. We can also review our manufacturer's technical specifications to see what temperature and humidity this material was tested under. Understanding this information will let us know if we are using the material under the conditions the manufacturer recommends. The more we understand our materials, the more effective we are as mold makers. Back clean, we can begin the demolding process. In this section, we've been referencing our silicone's cure time, which is sometimes referred to as demold time. Although this may seem like the only cure time we need to know, there is another cure time that we should be aware of. This is called the full cure time. Let's talk about the difference between the two and what we can do with this information. The full cure time is the amount of time it takes for our silicone to be completely done with all of its chemical reactions. The full cure time can range anywhere from five to seven days after we've poured our silicone. This is substantially longer than the cure time that we're used to working with. 
Our much shorter, regular cure time refers to the amount of time required before the silicone is exhibiting its physical properties and can be handled. However, after our cure time has elapsed, there are still a small number of chemical reactions that may be occurring. Although the small amount of chemical reactions may not impact any resin casting we do, they are important to consider, especially if we are using our mold for food or skin applications. In order for our material to be completely safe, we will need to ensure that our mixture is accurate according to the manufacturer's instructions and that our mold has completed its full cure of five to seven days. It's only after our full cure that we know the chemical reactions are complete and our mold is ready to be used. If you wanna stay in the know, then sign up for our email, text, and follow us on social where you can see the latest and greatest projects, courses, and other beautiful things that people just like you are making every day. Thank you again for joining us on this course, and we'll see you in the next one.